In this video, we're going to be discussing the differences between jake brakes and exhaust brake systems for diesel engines. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the differences between jake brakes, also known as compression brakes, or an engine retarder, and an exhaust brake system. Now, I'm not going to be going over all the intricacies of the jake brake system. I have a longer video on just talking about how that system works. We're going to go over a, a brief overview over it, how it works, and how the exhaust brake system works. The advantages and disadvantages of each one, why not all engines can use a jake brake, and why pretty much all engines could use an exhaust brake, but many do not. Okay, let's get into the video. Okay, so when we're talking about jake brakes or an exhaust brake system, usually you're talking about a diesel-powered vehicle, and the reason for this is typically these are heavier vehicles, and for that reason alone, you're going to need something to help slow the vehicle down if you're going down a hill or you're coming to a stoplight and you don't want to waste your mechanical brakes at the wheels. Now, cars typically don't have any of these systems, and for the most part, they can slow the vehicle down just by the engine itself. And the reason for that is car engines, gasoline engines we're talking about, are very good at producing engine vacuum because most of them have some sort of butterfly valve in the intake that'll help the engine build a lot of vacuum. This can help slow down the engine, which in turn helps slow down the vehicle. Diesels do not have a butterfly valve. Some newer ones do, but those are mostly emissions reasons to help build a lot of vacuum. Diesels don't build a lot of vacuum. They're usually boosted engines. So they can't use the engine by themselves to help slow these very heavily loaded vehicles down. So they need a system to help save your service brakes. And those systems are typically either a jake brake or an exhaust brake system. Now, both these systems exploit the fact that a diesel engine, as well as a gas engine, but a diesel engine is a big air pump, basically. It uses these cylinders to help pull air in and push air out of the cylinders. And that's very important to know because that is how these systems work. So let's go over the jake brake system real quick and then we'll talk about the exhaust brake system. Now you might keep hearing me say jake brakes. A jake brake is an engine retarder or a compression brake. A jake brake is a brand of it, but most people just call them jakes or jake brakes. They're all the same thing. There was a pack brake. A lot of manufacturers, Cat, Cummins, have their own. It's just most people call it a jake brake. And like I said, jake is a brand of compression brake. They all do the same thing. There's also an item called a brake saver, which will help slow your engine down. That is completely different. It has nothing to do with either an exhaust brake or a jake brake. And we're not going to be discussing that in this video. That'll be a different video where I discuss a brake saver. So let's get into the jake brake. So a jake brake basically exploits the engine's ability to be an air pump by allowing the cylinder to draw in air as the piston's coming down on the cylinder. It then allows the piston to compress that air, which takes a lot of energy to do. So it's compressing the air. That's on the compression stroke of a four-stroke diesel engine. Now, typically at the top of the compression stroke, you'll have your injector fire, which shoots fuel into the cylinder. It ignites, and then it powers the piston down, which creates energy to move the vehicle forward well the jake brake what it does is the injector does not fire the piston travels to the top of the cylinder compressing all that air which requires a lot of energy and what the jake brake does is it times the exhaust valve to open right as the piston is reaching top dead center on the compression stroke it's not opening on the exhaust stroke it still opens on the exhaust stroke because it can't bypass the camshaft but what it's doing is it's releasing all that compressed air on the top of the compression stroke. So that is basically how a jake brake system works. That's also why they're so loud because they're, they're ejecting all of that compressed air in a blip. And it's very loud, very loud. That's the gist of how a jake brake system works. Now it does this by the ECM controlling the timing of the jake solenoid which is usually oil fed it then opens the exhaust valve via mechanical via mechanical means of a solenoid so there's a lot to a jake system so let's get into how an exhaust brake system works so 
Theoretically, let's take the same engine. It does not have a Jake brake system and it's still a big air pump. So how does an exhaust brake system work? Well, we already discussed that the engine, a diesel engine is very poor at creating a vacuum. So it needs to restrict air in or air out. So an exhaust brake restricts air out because it's an exhaust brake. So an exhaust brake is much simpler. All it is is a butterfly valve after the turbocharger, although many variable, variable geometry turbochargers can now function as somewhat of a exhaust brake because they can restrict the exhaust flow out of the engine by themselves. But let's talk about just the exhaust brake system itself. So it has a flapper valve. Well, if you're going down a hill, your foot's off the throttle, so you're not really burning any fuel. You have air going into the engine, it's being compressed, and then there's the power stroke, even if you're not firing the cylinders. Then on the exhaust stroke, that air is being forced out and into the exhaust system, muffler, DPF, and then out the tailpipe. Well, an exhaust brake closes, or at least severely limits, the exhaust flow. So the engine's working very hard to push all this air through its system and out the exhaust, and what you're doing is you're basically capping the exhaust, or at least heavily restricting it, and it's slowing down that system. And since, mechanically speaking, the crankshaft is connected to the transmission, which is connected to the drive shaft, which is connected to the differential on the wheels, if you slow down your engine, mechanically, you're gonna slow down the vehicle. So that's how an exhaust brake system works. It restricts the exhaust flow out of the engine, which helps slow down the engine, which slows down your vehicle. That's how an exhaust brake system works. Okay, so why are there two different styles of systems? Why don't all engines just have an exhaust brake or why don't all systems just have a Jake brake? Well, there's disadvantages and advantages to each one. The first and main question is, which system is more effective? Both systems are effective for slowing down the vehicle. However, Jake brakes are a lot more effective at slowing down the vehicle. They, if you're going down a hill, you can, depending on the load, of course, a lot of the times you can use your jakes and they're usually adjustable. There's usually a one, two, or three step system, which will use your cylinder banks, either your inner two cylinders, the outer four cylinders are all six to help slow down the vehicle. And usually if you're going down a hill and you have jakes, you don't usually have to use your brakes at all, unless you're heavily loaded or you got a big tailwind, something like that. Maybe the jakes aren't working at full 100%, but jakes are a brilliant design and they work very well for slowing down vehicles. So you might ask yourself, okay, well, why is there even an exhaust brake system? Does it help with the Jake brakes or something like that? Well, no, uh, Jake brakes are usually on heavier duty diesel engines, 15 liters like Cat C15 or an ISX Cummins. Um, most of the cheaper, even though they're very expensive, smaller diesel engines don't have Jake brakes. We'll talk about like the Cat C7, the 3126, or the older 3208, stuff like that. Some of the smaller other manufacturers' engines, they just, there's no option for a Jake brake. And a lot of that has to do with the expense and the complicated nature of a Jake brake with the valve train system. So if we're still dis discussing Cats, pretty much all C15s or 3406s, they're gonna have Jake brakes and they work very well. But if you have, let's say, an RV or a service truck with a C7, you're not going to have Jake brakes. It wasn't an option on these engines. It just doesn't work with the valve train, and you can't add them. There's no cat option to add on a Jake brake system, even if you wanted to, even if you wanted to spend the thousands of dollars to have it added, add a new wiring harness in, adjust everything, get a new valve cover base and valve cover. Same goes a lot, a lot with the other manufacturers of the smaller diesel engines. So... In that case, you would pretty much have to use an exhaust brake system. Now, the exhaust brakes are still effective. They still work. They're just not as effective. I've driven RVs with and without exhaust brakes. Most have exhaust brakes. And it makes a big difference if you're going down a hill. It'll help slow you down. If you're coming to a light, especially if you're towing a trailer or a vehicle, it'll help slow you down and help save your brakes. They're just not as effective. Now, what if you have jakes, but you also want a little more and could you just add an exhaust brake as well? Unfortunately, not really. At least I've never seen a truck, and I've seen lots of trucks, RVs, and buses with an exhaust brake and a Jake brake. I've seen them with Jake brakes and brake savers, but we're not talking about brake savers in this, and they're completely unrelated to the exhaust system. Remember, the Jake system 
needs there to be a free flow of air after the system opens the exhaust valve to release the air from the cylinder. If you had an exhaust valve that was closed, it would be less effective at getting air into that cylinder, getting it out of the cylinder, because you'd be restricting the air after it's trying to release it from the cylinder. So you pretty much have an either or situation. So let's say you are buying a truck or an RV, maybe it has a C12 in it or a C15, something I'm very familiar with, but maybe it just has an exhaust break and you're not very happy with the performance. Can you add Jake's to an engine that was designed to have them but doesn't? Many engines, many C12s especially in, let's say, some RVs, on highway trucks, you had a lot of the service trucks, mixer trucks for like cement mixers that didn't have jake brakes if you have one of these engines you can add jake brakes to it it's very expensive though because the jake brakes they have a jake housing so you'd have to buy all of these it's either two or three separate housings you have to bolt those on you'll usually need a different valve cover base this will increase the height of the engine as well because the jakes sit over the the uh, rocker arms you'd have to get new Internal harnesses, sometimes sometimes the harnesses have blanks where you could put, um, you could just plug your jakes in. You usually have to then run wires to the dash for an on-off switch and then a uh, level selector switch. You'd have to program the ECM. You'd probably need a new external harness. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars, unless you had a donor vehicle. Whereas an exhaust brake system, if you were going to just add that to something that doesn't have it, would be less expensive. They have kits out there about $1,000 that will add an exhaust brake to pretty much any diesel engine that doesn't have an exhaust brake typically or to just replace it. The Jakes also have higher maintenance in general because you're adding a system to the valve train. So this has to be adjusted if you're doing your valves, if you're pulling, let's say an injector out, you usually have to remove the Jake housings. It takes more time to repair overhead issues. It makes it more complicated. What about fuel consumption? Does a Jake use more fuel than an exhaust brake? Well, I have a video discussing this actually. And anytime you're going down a hill, as long as you're not using your accelerator to speed up, basically zero throttle position, you can use either or whatever system you have or neither of the systems, it does not burn fuel. When your foot's off the throttle on a gas or a diesel engine, it's not really burning any fuel because there's no input to add energy to the system. You're not saying, okay, let's increase fuel consumption. You're saying, okay, even though the engine RPMs are higher, your fuel burn rate is at zero, basically. So that's not an issue for either one. Are there any advantages of the exhaust brake over the Jake brake system? Well, yes, there is. It's For one, there's lower maintenance. There's nothing really to adjust. It's a simpler system, easier to replace parts. As far as maintenance goes, sometimes there's a, uh, an anti-seize, a high temp anti-seize they'll want you to put on the butterfly valve. But that's pretty much it. Um, it's also much quieter. A lot of the times, if you're in a residential area and it says no engine brake, what they're talking about is jakes. They're not talking about an exhaust brake. Exhaust brakes are very quiet. It's pretty much the same as just taking your foot off the throttle on a gas engine. It doesn't add excess noise to the exhaust, unlike jakes, which can be very loud, especially if you're running small or no mufflers. It's very, very loud. Well, that's my video discussing the difference between a jake brake and an exhaust brake system. Hopefully you learned a little bit about what the two differences between the two systems are. If you're in the market for an engine that doesn't have a Jake or doesn't have an exhaust brake or you're thinking of adding one or you're confused, hopefully this sheds some light on the... All right, thanks for watching the video.